Hello and welcome. This is I seen you before playing Dominus 4 as early age Terodos in our Blitz game. Um, without further ado, let us head off straight to the video right here. So for this game, given that the diplomacy has happened on a Steam window, which I do not have, I'll try to reiterate whatever happened. So me and Nifflehelm, as you have seen in this video, have been fighting pretty much since uh, the first year of this game. After we both kind of ended up in a stalemate, I talked to him online and um, he was talking back to me. He did appreciate that it was a pretty good fight, never really seen a Ghost King doing this. And to me, I obviously haven't really fought Nifflehelm in a multiplayer game in a Blitz so far. And we both agreed that we are pretty much ending up in a stalemate and we usually do some diplomacy but then I asked him why he attacked me out of the blue which he proceeded into telling me that I did attack him out of the blue which wasn't wrong and after some explanation and some explaining we found out that Gilias playing as an Ethel Helm thought that the Terodos flag was the same as an independent flag. Note that we've been playing for over 4 hours, so I can't really complain to him, but as soon as I told him, when you attack a province if it's just one mounted commander, he immediately apologized and thought that I actually attacked it at first, which I failed, made the troops run away and only the mounted commander was left. But anyways, we just struck a peace deal, tried to trade in a few gems, and switching our attention to Chen Chi right now, who has conquered most of the map, as you can see. However, unfortunately for us, it's kind of pointless to show you the rest of its blitz because the game ended shortly afterwards. Um, basically, the two nations that Chen Chi has been fighting with just gave up. Atlantis never really poked anything at Tian Chi. The army that I'm sending has been <laughs> reduced due to the constant fights with Niflhelm. And the first giants that Niflhelm intends to use has been reduced in numbers because of fighting so long with me. So to avoid a lot of pointless ordering around, I am going to show you guys the graph, uh, the state of Tian Chi, and then I'll give you a small summary of what I think of Terodos and how things should have went. So right off the bat, we can see that Atlantis is leading in research. We did catch up to most of our enemies and were actually second for research. During that time, our research was mostly, mostly slowed down because we were in a fight with Niflhelm. And as you can see, Niflhelm's research went down as well. We were both leading on research with Chen Chi coming in as a fourth. However, due to us being in a stalemate and not using our research properly to counter whatever Chen Chi is doing and also the lack of scouts in Chen Chi's land to have an idea of what armies he's fielding resulted in a lot of, well, let's just say that not having that information doesn't help. Especially that during that time Chen Chi has expanded and taken away I believe Zilbaba, Abyssia by himself, and Atlantis, from what I was reading from the chat, has not really intervened at all. So by the time that me and Nifflehelm struck peace and decided to stop Chen Chi, it was already a little bit too late. Next up is the province graph. As we can see, Chen Chi has the, actually my body was the gem income, that's the next graph to check for magical treasury and gem power. We're just ranking on about 4th with Nifflehelm on 3rd, meaning we didn't have a lot of time to site search our provinces. And Tian Chi is pretty much about uh, 5 to 6 times at a higher income than any one of us. Which at this point means that he pretty much won the game as all he has to do is catch up on research and the amount of gems that he will be able to use will pretty much net him in a win. 
And as an added little bonus, we'll take a look at Tianqi and why I believe Terodos won't be able to do too good against him. That's one battle I've been able to scout. <coughs> With Niflheim on the right running, I believe, a Regeneration Bless and a Reinvigoration Bless. Whereas those guys have uh, a Fire 9, Water 9 and Astral 9 Bless, which puts them at a pretty high stake. So, just from the start of that, it gives them fire weapons. As you can see, just a little bunch of those guys is enough to chew through most of the giants. Given the fact that Neville Helm doesn't have as big as an army as he used to do, his thugs pretty much will not be able to withstand the blows from those units because uh, the fire damage goes straight through the etherealness. As you can see right now, his thugs are just one-shotted, which is uh, after this battle he decided to give up. As for me, I wanted to use a few Rain of Stones and Earthquake, mostly Earthquake. I wasn't too used to using Terodos with Earthquake. But uh, as we kept talking, Tianqi had built the Flying Summons and at this point I was like, alright, good game. And Chanchi seized uh, the leftover of the thrones and everyone else quit and that's how the Blitz ended. And as for a small nation with you as the Rodos playing in a Blitz, I believe that uh, you should probably go for two major blesses to use your sacreds to leverage uh, the power until you can reach, to reach Construction 4 which then hel hopefully helps your Melia turn into a bit more of a standing power. As I realize, um, you, need, you definitely need to get coastal forts as soon as possible. I believe we would have had a better time if Niflhelm didn't interrupt us building our fort early in the game. You also need to avoid getting yourself caught up in wars. The cool thing about free spawn is that you receive close to zero economic damage and you always get new units for free. But on the other hand, the problem will be that you need a game that will last a long time to leverage the full power of this. And blitzers are usually done with brushes and pretty f like as you've seen with Chanchi, them using a fire nine bless would have pretty much chewed through spectral infantry of Terodos without much trouble. At least until Terodos is able to get anything else to uh to basically counter this through probably alteration. Even Moors of the Earth would technically not work too well because those guys I believe do have quite high strength. One second thing to note is that you want to trade for as many death gems as possible and possibly invest into death into your pretender in order to gain a little advantage with Spectral Philosophers which will act as a very nice boost to your army. And um, secondly uh, I believe that Terodos can easily get rushed by any nation that has a high priority in a Fire 9 Bless, such as uh, Van Heim or Tiananog, especially if they are rushing. And Midland also falls in that category. So if you're playing a Blitz as Terodos, do invest on the fact that you are underwater and the enemy can't go out for you. But also be aware that a Fire 9 Bless will wreck your, sh uh, your, your army. It will definitely destroy it. So, keeping that in mind, one of the few counters to a Fire 9 Bless would be heading straight for construction and equipping thugs out for it with fire resistances and probably high defense to try to counteract the attack. But you should also take into account that having our 4 with our Melias usually works as a pretty good thing. You should also definitely side surge as soon as possible. Use your Ghost King in this blitz to defend yourself, but avoid doing it in the mid game because enemies might have horror marks, which will pretty much make your pretender a bit useless as he will receive random assassinations from uh, sorry about this, random assassination attempts from horrors over the game, and it gets stronger as he defeats the horrors. Um, in the long game of Terodos, that's technically how the, my Ghost King was made a bit useless throughout the game. Otherwise, thanks for watching everyone. The next part will be a single player of Terodos. And I'm proud to announce that we have released a guide about Terodos on Steam. So feel free to check it out right there in the video description. Secondly, we are going to kick up our Twitter back on. So do follow us on Twitter at I seen you before. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a comment, contact me on Steam if you want to, any way that you prefer. Hope you guys enjoyed it and 
See you soon.